part four. In this segment, we're going to be discussing when should I not start Taylor training? Yes, you heard me correctly. I said not start. And the reason why this is important to know is because it's actually going to clarify for us when we truly are ready, because this is what we want to avoid. So the first thing that I would want to explain that we want to avoid is that if I feel a need to prove that my child is, and let's fill in the blank, it could be my child is capable, my child is normal, my child is exceptional. If I feel any need to prove that my child is something, then what happens is I bring in a lot of pressure because this is not about having my child trained so that he can be independent and grow and do the things that he needs to in life. Mm -mm. This is gonna be about my need to prove that my child is whatever that fill in the blank was. So if I recognize this and I see, ooh, I do want to prove or I do feel a need to prove, then what, as soon as we have that awareness, what happens is something very amazing. That awareness itself takes away a lot of the pressure. But what I have to do is I have to be aware of it. And I also want to challenge the idea that I need to prove it. I want to ask myself, do I really need to prove that my child is normal? Do I need to prove that my child is just as good as maybe my neighbor's kid? And when I look at it in an aware fashion like that, when I bring it from the subconscious into the conscious and I say, is that really true? Do I need to? Generally, we're able to then bring in the rational voice, which can tell us, mm, no, not really. And that's not why we're going to be approaching this. And that, again, it reduces the pressure. So it could be actually that the pressure is not even coming from inside you as much as that there's an external pressure that's creating an internal pressure for you. So for example, it could be that your mother is telling you that when you were one and a half, you were trained already, so what's going on? How come her grandchild isn't trained yet? It could be the nurse, um, the pediatrician, the neighbor, doesn't matter who it is. The point is that the pressure may be put on you and if that's the reason that you approach the toilet training process and that's why you want your child to be trained, it's gonna make that very pressured voice be very prominent and it's gonna be very hard to hear the rational voice that tells you what you really believe inside is really going to be helpful in the process. So. We don't want to start it if that's going to be my reason to be going in. So we want to look at that first. Now, the second thing that we want to look at is, is a major change expected? So if a major change in the life of a child is expected, it's just generally not a good idea to start. Research does show that when there is a major upheaval, for example, a new baby coming into the family or a move or something um, more sad, such as a divorce, any, any major life change that goes on, what we tend to see is that children regress if they were very recently trained. So, of course, if we can anticipate and we know of a major change coming up and whether that reason is a happy reason for us or something more sad, we're talking about really is the life of the child going to be majorly different. And if that's the case, so it's not a good time. Number three, if I feel very, very angry or extraordinarily anxious about the idea of my child having an accident, then I want to look at that before I start training because the anxiety over the accident or the very high a negative emotion like anger, when that comes in, even before the child has an accident, already it's going to bring excess pressure. 
because it's not just that I'm training my child, but it's that mm, what if he has an accident? And it becomes so scary that even before he has the accident, let alone after, everything that I'm going to be do, everything that I'm going to be doing is going to be colored by that. So I don't want to start if I do really feel very anxious or very angry at the thought of an accident. So tune into part five of this toilet training series because then we're going to be discussing what can I do to reduce negative emotions and stress during the toilet training process.